we thank you for coming and uh, we really, Paul is not here to defend himself. So uh, your last charge, uh, I would encourage any media interested in following up on that directly, to do that directly with Paul and uh, to not engage those who are on the panel to, to defend that. And, and I really want to remind people that we are here to talk about the election in Rwanda and their implications for democracy and for issues of governance in Rwanda, in the Great Lake regions, uh, and also um, their implications for U.S. foreign policy. So uh, with that said, are there any questions? And again, we'll ask first working media. Any additional questions from working media? You all get the privileged position. Any of those who had their hands up before have, please, we'll start with you in the back. I think this is still uh, uh, the subject of persecution. So we have been able to provide few evidence and we have a lot of for him and other. So again, again, so without it's still subject of investigation. I cannot use the amount of So, so excuse me, excuse me. I'm sorry. We would love our audience to participate, but this is not the moment. We are in a dialogue. A question was asked, really, you know, impugning uh, Paul Rusesabagina, one of our panelists, who is not here. Um, I think if there are journalists that are interested in pursuing this question, clearly the ambassador doesn't have the amount, but you can pursue this question directly with Paul. We have the contact information. It's a shame he was not well to join us today, but he has made himself available for media, and, and that can be a question that you can pose directly to him. We can also make his statement available to any media that's interested. I think there was another hand from working media. Please. I'm really interested in um, hearing... Please identify yourself. I'm sorry, Neil Aurora. I'm a reporter for the Scripps Outbar. Thank you. I'm interested in hearing Peter Erlinger's response to the ambassador's comments. Uh, um, um, Your the, response to the ambassador. Oh, sure. Uh, there's, there's no question... Please use the microphone. Oh, sorry. Thank yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's... Uh, no question that uh, uh, Rwanda has made strides in uh, a variety of areas. Um, but I'd, uh, excuse me. Can, may I just clarify, were you asking in particular this last comment of the ambassador or the all of the statements of the ambassador? No, the last comment that oh, was... Oh, that, that one. Oh, that one. Um, I don't have any information on that. And, uh, however, guilt by association is something that's used in support for the Palestinians and all sorts of organizations in, in the Middle East. Um, it's an old tactic that uh, has been used uh, uh, that... Uh, um, uh, uh, certainly, uh, uh, the identification of organizations as uh, as terrorists were were quite uh, quite familiar with. That's, uh, uh, but I don't have any specific information about about the accusation that uh, you made. Uh, but I'd be happy to look into it. And put, if you give me the documentation, I'm uh, very interested in following uh, documentation wherever it leads. That's what got me into trouble. Okay, so I'd be happy to do it. Uh, many of us remember the, uh, it was just until last year that the African National Congress was identified as a terrorist organization. But uh, that said, there were some other working media that had their hands up, I think. Unfortunately, he's just left. Any other working media with questions? Okay, please. Yes, my name is Moscow Munga, and uh, one of the things that I'd like to put across, <coughs> even just sticking to, to see a country like Rwanda 16 years after a genocide, having an election, is in itself, no matter how you wish to look at it, an achievement. Now, Rwanda seems to be, the first thing that the panel does, and I really would encourage some of these brothers and sisters I see here who are members of the diaspora from Rwanda to begin reconciliation with members of other members of Rwanda who are in the diaspora right here in the U.S. That would show your true intentions. That would be the first thing. The second thing that I would say is when we look at, at the numbers that are coming out right now, 
supporting uh, or coming out, whether they will support the president or not, they're out there. Word is going out there. It shows, it shows in many ways that Rwanda is moving in the direction towards this democracy that we all are aspiring to. Now, the perfection of democracy is something that we, it, it's an ideal. We're all heading towards that. Now, when you see people coming together, when you see that, the so efforts, I'm sorry, do you have a question? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. You, yes, I do. Now, what I would, I, what I would suggest, and I would ask these uh, panelists here, in what way are their actions positive towards gaining this goal, rather than the critical aspect that they work with to prove that they're not a conspiracy against just a particular regime? Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you for your question. Uh, the first thing I would uh, like to say is that this is not an election, so to say that there is an election in Rwanda 16 years after the genocide is not true. Um, this is a shame, this is a lie. Yeah. It's not true that there is an election in Rwanda. That's number one. Uh, number two, uh, the fact that there are thousands or hundreds of thousands of people showing up at rallies of the president is not a surprise. I mean, the president of North Korea, when he goes places, there, there are thousands and thousands of people that are coming to greet him. If people are being coerced to go and show up at rallies, you know, that does not prove the popularity. And if he's so popular, why would he allow all of the opposition to run against him so he can really win? You know, that's another, that's number three. So. If it's true that he's that popular, having a free, fair, and open election. Um, number four, yes, uh, this is, um, we are asking for a dialogue, an inclusive dialogue of Rwandans, including everyone, not excluding members of the media, not excluding critical media, not beheading people in the opposition, not killing and jailing, people who do not agree with you, not bringing charges of genocide, um, genocide ideology against everyone that disagrees with the government if they are from the Hutu ethnic group, and not bringing charges of terrorism against Tutsis who are um, standing against the government. That is what's happening now. So um, that's what we're asking for. Include all of those Tutsis, include all of those Hutus, include all of these, I mean, the Rwandan government has some members of this terrorist group that lives in the Congo, the FDLR. The general that used to lead that, um, that terrorist group is now in Rwanda. Um, he's, you know, so, you know, bring all of these people together. Uh, bring the, you know, this, the Mushaidi, bring him on the table. You know, he's a genocide survivor, like many people in Rwanda. Uh, allow general, um, Kayum Banyamwasa, do not assassinate him, you know, bring him to the table. Let all Rwandans come together and discuss the issues and actually come up with a solution for all Rwandans, not for the current um, president to remain in power just um, by running um, a shame, uh, a chariot of, of an election. But you're passing judgment. Oh, I'm done sorry, this is not a... Thank you for, for asking your question. We, we now move on to, if it's okay, you want to contribute to this? Right, please. And then we move to other questions. Uh, that's uh, a good question, I get to worry for reconciliation. But judging the current uh, government, uh, everybody can uh, now see what is going on there. If you have uh, a mono-ethnic, uh, army, you have mono ethnic uh, in the government post, every post. That I don't understand how you can say that there is a peace in such a country and the election will be the right one. So, as my colleague said, the reconciliation and talk should involve all uh, inclusive one dance. The conflict between Hutu and Tutsi should be abandoned, should be discussed, should be discussed by the Rwandans. Eh? Solve it. Find the way to live together. Find the way to share 
the, the government post, the army which stands for the whole, all people, all uh, ethnic uh, in Rwanda. So in case, any time, if you don't have army which represents all people, uh, the, the government post which represents all people, so there's no democracy you can say. <laughs> and that means one population is uh, oppressed. That's not a country you can say that is heading in the right way. So, uh, right uh, last month, we organized a kind of uh, dialogue. We invited the members of the, uh, the political party in Rwanda and the other uh, organization which are affiliated to the government, but they told us the government said don't go in that uh, kind of talk. So they refused. So the, who is now uh, in a good position to organize the, the dialogue? It's the government. The government has the way and the means to call us, the, in, uh, the outside uh, organization, activists or the diaspora, and the internal people to put it together. Say, actually, my organization is heading to the government, insisting to the government, please, let's meet together our people, talk about the conflict, solve the conflict. So, there is no way you can live together if we were bleeding the country above the, the mud, the water. Never, we never. Thank you.